manager announcing his retirement after the Labour Cup. What's your initial reaction? Well, the sense of sadness, obviously, because we lost in the space of two weeks, Serena and Roger Federer. Well, basically, you know, two of the biggest stars that ever played the game and, and two of the greeters who have ever played the game. So I sense it was like the end of an era almost, um, you know, because they have been part of my journey when I was playing. Roger was obviously in his peak, winning a lot of things and then Serena as well. And and now coming to see both of them taking their retirement almost at the same time. Um, you know, I felt like, OK, that book is almost closed and now we are moving to the new generation of players with Carol Sakaras and, you know, all of them. But um, Novak and Rafa are still hanging on. <laughs> we will see for how long. Um, but definitely since some sadness. And then I listened to his video and I thought it was just so beautifully written, so beautifully said, um, coming from really his sort of, you know, deep feeling about tennis and his journey and everyone that was so important to him. Um, to take him to where he was. And and I felt it was so water, you know, you know, the, the way he said it, the way he phrased it, um, that was totally him. And um, and I think a lot of people who have listened to that video would be moved by this, you know, the kind of words he has used and, and the kind of message he tried to send across. So yeah, a sense of sadness, obviously, but then completely understand his decision from what he had to face from the past three years. Definitely. Um I was reading some quotes. Well, I think, you know, it, it's very much depending on of your sort of own taste in a way. Um, you know, if you like the sort of beautiful, elegant, um, smooth tennis, you have to go for Roger Federer. Now, obviously, with Novak, you know, being at 21 and, and Rafa being a 22 Grand Slam, if we speak numbers only, then, of course, you have two players on top of him. But I think it's very much a debate because it depends on the style of play you like and um, that said, you know, I, I absolutely love to see Novak plays and win. I absolutely love to see Rafa winning again at Roland Garros this year. I think it was one of the most incredible sports achievements um, that you can possibly witness. But in terms of game style and, and the way he has revolution tennis, I think Roger was the first one. And then they push each other to new heights. And, and I think that was really special to see. When you say that he revolutioned... Yeah, so for me, when I see Roger, I could definitely see a massive footprint of Pete Sampras into his game. And I think very much he said that he was inspired and dreamed to be the sort of next Pete Sampras. And obviously it was a very special match when he played against him at Wimbledon. And you could tell that Roger played on his own terms. He, he was not someone that would sort of counter punch or wait for the mistake. He would go for his shots and build his game. And he took that to another level with his forehand. And, and I think he was really one of the first players to have this very particular technique of taking the ball so much in front of him. And, and that inspired off players. When you see Alcaraz playing those days, for example, you can see the, almost the same technique with a straight arm forehand. So you can you tell how much impact on from a player when you see new generation trying to copy in your style. And I think very much Pete Sampras had an impact as well as Andre Agassi on the generation of Roger, Rafa and Novak. And Roger as having this impact on the new generation with Carlos Alcara. So that's when I say that he was really the first one to elevate the game to another level because he brought that dimension of, of his forehand when he was really almost able to play the ball wherever he wanted. Now, I always remember that sentence from Andre Agassi when he started to play against Roger saying, well, I never felt against anybody that I could play only in 20 centimeters square because that's the only safe spot I can play, which is deep to Rogers back end. If I play anywhere else, it would take the game away from me. And, you know, that was then the first one to build that on the table. And then obviously Rafa and Novak arrived and started to challenge that. Then they put each other to new heights when you have pinnacles of, you know, 2008 Wimbledon final um, and all those matches in between them. That was just beyond epic for me you, you know you can the sporting greats in your opinion oh very much in there um absolutely michael jordan kobe bryant lebron james tiger woods tom brady um you know they are people that transcend from their sports i mean they're icons um you go in the streets you say roger federer i'm in dubai right now you say roger federer roger federer everyone will know who he is um and the same from lebron and michael jordan nobits when you transcend from outside of your sport and you become an icon and everyone knows who you are, that's when you know you have been one of the greatest of all time across every sport. Same for Serena, you know, same, you can put Novak and Rafa in there as well, but it's just, 
that amount of fame and, and that amount of inspiring generation. Um, very much absolutely in there. Definitely. And when we think of what best Roger Federer game? Um, I don't know if it's the best in terms of level, but I remember when he won the Australian Open uh, after having an injury for six months and, um, you know, listening and probably reading the press saying that he would never win anything anymore because uh, Novak was so good and, and Rafa was still there and it was just his time has been gone and, you know, he would never win a Grand Slam again. And I was courtside commentating back then, so I could really see from courtside all the emotions. And uh, when he beat Rafa at that Australian Open final, that was something. I mean, I've never seen Roger that happy on that day. Um, that was a very, very special moment for him and his whole team. And in terms of coming to this decision to retire, we saw... Um, well, it's just his body. You know, the, the problem is when you just can't do it anymore physically. Um, even though the decision is hard to take and hard to swallow because it's just a part of your life that's going to disappear, you have to come to realization that it's just not possible anymore. And for me, it was my shoulder. I just, after 45 minutes, my, I just couldn't lift my arm anymore. And therefore, I tried to go to the U.S., but it just didn't work. And then I had to come to that realization when it just can't be done anymore. And I think for Roger, I talked to him at Wimbledon this year because we were invited to the same on-court ceremony to celebrate the 100 years of Santa Court. And we talked a little bit about, you know, his, obviously his injury, his body, and he said, well, you know, Marion, when every time I'm trying to push a little hard to get ready back for a Grand Slam, my, my knees start to swallow and I just have liquid in my knee. So it just, I don't know what's going to happen, but it just doesn't go north. It just keeps going south. And every time I try to push it, it just keeps going south. So I... I think he gave it fairly a lot of tries. I think he tried everything possible. That's probably why he gave himself, you know, almost a year, more than a year to, to try every single process, to try to, you know, maybe it needs a bit more time to heal. Maybe I should try this technique, that technique of practice, but then you come to a realization that nothing works. And that's where your body just tells you, that's it, I had enough, you know. He played more than 1,500 matches over 20 plus years. You can't do this forever. You know, there is this, a certain time when your body has your limits and that was it for Roger but I think no one can blame him for not trying every single time at 100% when he was stepping on the court. Definitely and one thing you both have in common is obviously winning Wimbledon about Roger on grass and Wimbledon. Oh my god so I was you know lucky enough obviously to have this very special moment and, and all the players that were on that court that day were so moved by how Wimbledon put it together because they really make you feel special when you're a Wimbledon champion. And we were all in that back room before we actually were called on court. And, you know, we were talking about it, how special it is to wear that purple badge. And and Roger said, well, you know, actually at the beginning, I didn't really want it to come because, you know, I haven't played for a long time and I didn't want it to give too much away to whether I would keep playing or not. But when women don't call me, I just couldn't say no. And obviously Rod Ever was there as well. Rod Ever came and he's so close to Rod. And Rod said to him, come on, Roger, just come and, you know, let's have a good time. And he made the decision. But I can tell you that, so obviously he was the last one to walk on court because he won eight times there. And the reception from the crowd at that moment when they opened those two doors and they said, Roger Federer from John McEnroe, it was just absolutely manic. It just... The whole Santa Court just exploded when they heard Roger Federer. I mean, he is just so loved there. He received so much love. That, that 2019 final that he lost to Novak having too much point. I don't think one person outside of Novak's family, you know, you could hear them. Even though you, Novak had some fans, it, the Rogers fan was just so loud that the, you felt like it was a whole place for Roger, which obviously Novak had fans, but... You know, he just received so much support, so much love there. And just seeing his name in gold on that champion's board year after year after year after year, obviously Novak is going to try to tie that record and then pass it eventually. But, you know, Roger means grass and, and, and the two just are linked together. Definitely. Um, you spoke about the generational talent. Yeah, yeah I think Alcaraz will very much be in the mix, but I don't think we will see one player we got 20 Grand Slam in 15 or 20 years. I don't believe it. I think those three have been more than even superhuman. I mean, they have bring tennis to a level of consistency that is just, and along with Serena as well, of course. I don't think anyone would be able to replicate that. Um, 
you know, when you see Carlos, of course, he had an amazing US Open. It's just incredible achievement, but Novak was not there. Rafa was injured. You know, Roger doesn't play anymore. Titi Pass lost first round. Zverev can't play. You know, it's just a lot of circumstances. And he had to stay still save match point against Sinner. So I don't think, I don't see him dominating tennis like Roger did or Novak did or Rafa did for the next 20 years. I just don't see it. It might happen. My guess is he would end up between eight and 10, which is already an incredible, incredible, incredible number and achievements. But I don't think we will see that amount of domination. Remember when Roger was dominating the game, he was losing three match a year. I mean, I don't think we will see that anymore from anyone. Um, I think that the level between each other, it's very close. You don't see a major gap. So I think we will have, you know, maybe Carlos winning one and then Sina winning one and Zverev finally winning one and then Medvedev winning more. You know, it's just, it's just going to keep rotating between maybe five or six names. Um, but I don't think it will be one name just keeping winning everything.